I, I find from my experience that if you're in a conversation that doesn't allow space for boredom, it will never reach anywhere. Interesting. Like if you meet, I now travel around the world and I meet these very uh, 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 powerful and famous and influential people. And the problem with powerful and famous and influential people, they don't have time. So if you get an hour with this person, then every minute should count. Mm. And boredom is, is the scariest thing because if the conversation becomes boring, it's over. I don't have time for this nonsense. I have to run this company. I have to run this country. I boredom, you go bore somebody else with, with, with that. <laughs> so true. And, I love that. And then what you find is that you are forced all the time to all the time think, what's the most interesting and important thing I can say? Mm. And then you, reach, you usually reach out for the things you've already said a million times before. And you know they are effective, and both of you find yourself just ex ex exchanging these slogans, mm. and you never reach anywhere new. And to reach someplace new in a conversation, like you need to go somewhere, and 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 nobody really knows what they're talking about, and you're wandering around, and you realize, oh, it's not going anywhere, and you come back, and you wasted 20 minutes on on something which was in the end it was nothing, and you you can't do it when you meet the president or whatever. But the most interesting conversations I had in life, it was like this long conversation when much of it was, was quite boring. Yeah. So, and it's the same when you go to explore yourself. Like, I don't know, not necessarily in meditation even, like you, you want to, you, you go to use sport. So, okay, you start, I'll go on a hike. And you start going and after three hours you feel thirsty and it's hot and it's inconvenient and there is nothing to see and you say oh, forget that I'll go back and watch some 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 movies and you'll never reach the interesting parts of the journey either the geographical journey or the kind of inner journey of exploration if you don't allow yourself if you don't have the the discipline mm. to go through these boring and sometimes painful and sometimes scary bits I love that. I am so glad you brought that up. I think it's such a brilliant point. I think you're so right because as soon as you put the pressure of performance on, whether that's the pressure of performance through time, like when we know we have a time limit, like you were saying when you're meeting influential people and you've got like 30 minutes to say something profound yes, or you've got like 40 minutes to prove that you have more knowledge or wisdom or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes time's a pressure. Sometimes the pressure is not time, but the pressure is the people at the table. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know that everyone's powerful at the table. And so the pressure is, oh my God, I know he's smart and she's smart. So what do I have to say? And, and I think you're spot on that in those times, our lateral brain completely switches off, the logical brain switches on, mm -hmm. and we just say stuff we already know. <laughs> and, and you don't have moments of brilliance and you don't have a moment that, that sparks unique thought. Mm -hmm. You don't get into flow state, for yeah. example. You can't, you can't generate anything new. I think that's so true. And I have to say in my training as a monk, which I loved and was an incredible part of my life, a lot of it was just discipline and doing the same thing over and over and over again in the beginning. And what you said, walking across that desert of boredom to then find a breakthrough. Yeah. And it's almost just like that painful 99% to experience that 1% of bliss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like in the movie, it always gets condensed into this <laughs> fast track one minute or two minutes like I don't know you have Yoda training Luke Skywalker so in the movie it just got condensed into these two minutes you, you get the point let's move on nothing and it was probably very I don't know it, it, it's fiction of course but <laughs> it was probably a lot of it was just you know this tedious thing yeah. that you have to go through through with mm -hmm. absolutely are you bored right now and uh, right now no no <laughs> All right, we've we got to get bored for a bit, guys. We've got to get bored for a bit so that you've, uh, you know, get some space. No, I, I think that's a great point. I think becoming okay with boredom mm -hmm. is such a useful skill. And I think you're spot on that in the journey of self-exploration or any journey. Yeah, but I, but I, I just came now from Silicon Valley. And what we, what we just said is the greatest heresy possible in California in 2019, in LA in 2019, in San Francisco in 2019, to say, let's just give some space to boredom. Yeah. There is nothing more radical and, <laughs> and subver <laughs> subversive. Then I, I just I, I just uh, saw that uh, Reed Hastings some, some time ago said that Netflix's biggest enemy 
Like who, they, 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 he was asked, who is the biggest competitor of Netflix? And the answer was sleep. Mm, so true. It's not Hulu. It's not any of the Amazon, others. It's yeah. sleep. That's our yeah. biggest competitor. So, you know, boredom, if people could get along with boredom, you know, entire industries will crash. Would just collapse. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so true. And, and the instant gratification industry, the instant excitement industry mm -hmm. is, is thriving off that. We know that. That's obvious. There's a... So let, let's start here the, the boring movement. Yeah, let's start the boring movement here. I love it. This is the boring <laughs> podcast. We're going to call it that. I love it. No, and it's, and it's true. I read a study that 80% of us pull out our phone in a crowd just to not feel lonely, <laughs> right? Like not even to do anything. Just when we're walking through a crowd, we pull out our mm. phone just so that we feel like we're doing something. And that pressure of always wanting to do something. Just so high. No, I love that. I think that's such great advice. Find time this weekend to be bored, mm. right? Be okay with boredom. Do you have it? Have you, and, and this, I don't expect you to have an answer. I'm just exploring it because mm. I, I love the point you brought up. Do you have any ways of becoming more okay with boredom or letting there be moments in a conversation? Like I'm sure when you went out on your first date with your mm. husband, when you met through online dating, I mean, was there any boredom there or were you like having to say stuff? Was he, did you allow space for boredom? Because there's so much uh, pressure when you date someone, right? I, I don't remember that it was boring, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the, there is definitely a lot of pressure in, in, in those situations. To be um, charismatic, to be, you know, to be attractive, to... Yeah, to, not, not, not to bore the other person. It's exactly. the worst thing you can do. It was so boring. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's, um, it's, it's difficult. Again, I mean, it, I don't want to give like a single recipe. No, no, no. I mean, I, yeah, I, don't I, I do it, you know, with my meditation practice. Sure. So you really familiarize. I mean, boredom is, you know, it's an abstract idea. What, what does it actually mean? Yeah. What it actually means is our, our particular sensations in the body. It's not an abstract. And when you actually observe, I mean, you see that they are extremely unpleasant. Like when you're bored, mm -hmm. we tend to think about boredom as something like nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But actually, a lot of things are happening. There is a lot. It's not, you know, it's not like severe pain. Mm. It's actually a, a, a more subtle kind of pain in throughout your body, which many people find far more intolerable mm. than the heroic severe pain mm -hmm. that, you know, again, I, I'll take an example just for meditation because, because I, I'm more familiar with it. But I know that a lot of people, when they sit for meditation and there is a strong pain, they, it's quite easy for them to deal with that. They're actually even enjoying it in a way because they feel, hey, I'm doing something very important now. I'm getting over this pain, no pain, no gain, wonderful, pain is good. And then when boredom comes, it immediately breaks them. They can't deal with it because it's, it's again, it, it's a very unpleasant feeling in the body. It's not abstract. But part of it, you don't feel heroic, you don't feel you're doing something important, you feel that you're wasting your time, that you're so little and insignificant, and, and especially people who say, come to whatever practice it is. Uh, again, it, it could even be art, like you, you're learning to paint, and ah, now I'm Picasso, I'm doing this great work of art, and I'm having this, this artistic crisis, that's wonderful. But if, if you're just bored, you don't know how to deal with it. It's for most people, I think it's, it's actually diff more difficult mm. to deal with this subtle pain mm. of boredom than with the heroic pain of some great crisis. Absolutely, I think you're spot on. That's a, yeah, for me, bo for me, when I'm bored, I find a, I use it as space to breathe properly. That's, that's kind of what I do. When I'm mm. just in a gap or I'm in a moment where I'm like, uh, I'm a bit bored right now, you know, and, and it's so easy to do the habit of just picking out my phone. And, and I know that, and I've noticed myself do that over and over again, that whenever I'm bored or there's a gap, mm -hmm. I just take on my phone without any purpose, without any intention, without any goal. 